where I am. Welcome to PowerCast with PC. But because of what we want to experience, we want to experience God in a way that the person that I am is no longer fit for who God wants me to be. And the only way that happens is if I come into his presence with thanksgiving and I enter his courts with praise and say, God, if there is anything in my life that I am honoring and putting before you and making greater than you, I need you to come and get it because I don't want anything in my life that's going to take any glory from you and I wish I had about two or three people who could just testify that I may not be there yet but that's where I'm headed I'm coming to a place where when God sees me it's all about him and everything else comes secondary see being being a worshiper is having permission to go where others don't have permission to go and being able to take others to a place that they cannot go themselves. The word is transcendent. Everybody say transcendent. Somebody type in transcendent. Transcendent means beyond the range of normal, surpassing the ordinary. Transcendent means exceptional. Watch this. A real worshiper understands that because I have access in the presence of the Lord, watch this, I am never comfortable being the victim. I said because I have access to the presence of the Lord, I am never comfortable with being the victim. Watch this. Even if I'm in it and even if it's whipping my tail, my posture is always I'm working through it and it's not working me out. Why? Because I am a worshiper. Before the foundations of the world, God had a plan for me. He put his hands on me and formed me out of the dirt and picked my mother and picked my father and I came through my mother's womb and I came with a purpose and I came with an assignment and that assignment according to Job is but a few days but full of trouble but when trouble shows its ugly head I can look trouble in the face and tell trouble you are only but for a moment for the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be reveal can I just tell 10 people that there is something in the inside of you that trouble is pulling out of you and if you could just learn how to maintain your posture of worship what the enemy meant for evil all of a sudden you'll begin to see it turned around for I wish I had somebody that could testify I've already been there pastor I had some stuff that I knew wasn't going to work out but some way somehow God made Made away. I'm almost done. I'm going to let you out. Huh? He, he, he made a way out of nowhere. We, we are never comfortable with being the victim. Not only that, but worshipers have the ability to produce above their ability. What does that mean? That means that what I do is not what I do because I have the ability to do it. I've got to trust. I've got to depend. And I've got to lean on a God who is more than enough. This is why you got to be a worshiper because God will use you to do stuff that you can't do and all the people see is you and if you're not careful you will think that when they praise you that they're praising you but they ain't really praising you they're praising God's ability in you but when you have an understanding of who God is in you you can just say God gets the glory it's, it's no goodness of my own I'm not, I'm not as smart as you think I am I'm not as talented as you think I am I'm not as gifted as you think I am I'm just so Somebody who said, if you can use anything, Lord. Lord, I wish I had somebody with me. I'm going to preach in a second. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Somebody ought to type in, use me, use me, use me. You Don't use me up. I want a relationship. I don't just want to be the person that you use to bless everybody else and go home and depress. No, I want to have the kind of relationship that people can live off of the overflow of my relationship with you. I want to have the kind of relationship that I don't need 
money, that I don't need cars, that I don't need clothes, that I don't need things to be gratified. But I can wake up in the morning and look myself in the mirror and say every day that I'm living, every day that I'm breathing is a good day. And everything else is just gravy. Do I have any witnesses in here that's at a place in your life that this pandemic has taught you that if I'm alive, it's a blessing? So worship does four things. Here's the first thing that worship does is it works on you. It works on you. You cannot worship and worship not begin to work. Because the presence of the Lord does not just show up for comfort. The presence of the Lord shows up to challenge. So the first thing worship does is worship looks at you and says, you know you can do better. That's called conviction. Somehow, I don't know what happened, but a generation came in and they have mislabeled conviction and correction with judgment. So people can't handle criticism and you can't help them improve because they think they have it all together. And if you don't agree with them having it all together, then you all of a sudden are judgy or are the devil. But let me just help somebody. Anybody who lives at a place of excellence is someone who can be criticized. Anybody who lives at a place of improvement is someone who can hear even when they don't like. Okay, I knew I was going to miss some amens right there. But can I just tell you that if we don't get spiritually mature in any other area of our life, we ought to be praying, God, I need you to heal my ear and hear my heart so that I don't emotionally disengage when divine instructions show up. Because when instructions show up, they come to look you in your face and tell you, you aren't right. So the first thing worship does is it works on you. It looks you in the face and says, you know you can do better. But then the second thing worship does is worship works in you. It doesn't just tell you you know you can do better. It doesn't just show you the areas of your life where you need to do better. Watch this. It begins to bring you into an understanding of I can do it. It's not something that is so far-fetched and impossible. It is something that is very close. In other words, it is something that all I have to do is make a decision to be better. All I got to do is decide that where I am is not where I'm going to stay. Somebody say decision. All I got to do is decide that the doctor's report ain't the best report. All I have to do is to decide that what the lawyer said ain't the law. All I have to do is decide that my bank account is not all that I have. For I have an account in heaven that he will supply all of my need. I wish I had somebody who just decided that where I am is not where I'm going to stay. And when you see me waving my hands and when you see me giving them praise, it's not because everything I have has already worked out. It's because I know that he's working it out. And I know he's working it out because he's working me out. And by the time he's done working me out, the it that I'm believing him for will be ready when I get me to Together. Somebody ought to just wave your hands and say, get me together, get me together, get me together because there's some houses I need to buy. Get me together because there's some businesses I got to run. Get me together because there's some, y'all ain't talking to me, there's some tuitions I got to pay for. Get me together because God's got an abundant life waiting for me and I'm sitting here playing around settling for less than the best when God says all you got to do is make a decision. So worship works on you. Worship works in you. Here's my favorite one. Worship then begins to work through you. All of a sudden, stuff starts getting better because you start getting better. I'm going to say that again. I said stuff starts getting better because you start getting better. Your family starts getting better because you start getting better. Your career starts getting better because you start getting better. Because I've been in the presence of the Lord. I don't even want to start my day without taking a few moments in his presence. Because there's too much going on for me to have something come and put 
me right back into who I used to be. I ain't got time for that person. That person ain't ready for where God is taking me. I want to get to the place where everything around me is healthy because I am healthy. I want to get, y'all ain't saying nothing. I want to get to the place that I don't have to look over my shoulder and hope and plead and hope and swipe my card and pray it for, y'all ain't saying nothing, and pray that it goes through. I don't want to go to the bank and hope I can get a loan. I want to get to a place where God is not just in my heart, but he's in every area. And somebody will just say, and I'm on my way there. I'm on my way there. I came to make an announcement to you that 2021 is a year that has been prepared for your success. But in order for us to get to the success, we got to get through to who we are. And when we get through to who we are, we will begin to see stuff in a way that we've never seen it before. What once looked like trouble and what once looked like an issue and what once looked like a problem will all of a sudden be the greatest days of your life because not only does worship work on you not only does worship work in you not only does worship work through you hear this but there is a place watch this where worship begins to work as you in other words that when people see you they no longer see your past they no longer see your mistakes they no longer even see the color of your skin all they see is that this person has the hand of God on them in such a way that we cannot say no to them. And I want to prophesy to somebody this morning that God is bringing you to a level of anointing that when people see you, they will not be able to say no. They're going to get their mouth fixed to say no. And when they say no, yes will come out. People that want to say, I can't do it for you, they'll start telling you they'll do stuff for you that'll blow your mind. Let me tell you why. Because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. That's why you got to make this decision that no matter what is going on around me, nothing can take my worship. I ain't going to let nothing steal my worship. This week, it was one thing after another. And I had to make a decision that I will not allow my external circumstances to change my internal conviction. I am what God God says I am. It will be what God says it will be, and I'm going to have what God says I can have. Y'all missed your shout because this pandemic has been looking us in the face, saying, come on now, drop your worship. You still going to scream? You going to go back to church after all this time the devil is a lie? I am a worshiper. It was worship that kept me when everybody else was losing their mind. It was worship that protected me. I don't need a vaccine. I got the victory. I don't, y'all ain't talking to me here. I don't need a stimulus. I've got the spirit of God. And because I'm a worshiper, I can get in his presence and I can begin to get everything that I need. But the question is, will you worship? And so that's why he asked Abraham. He says, I want you to go in get Isaac and I want you to begin to build an altar for Isaac and I don't want you to tell Isaac what's going on because if you tell Isaac what's going on then Isaac may try to run away all I want you to do is tell Isaac we're going to worship I want you to tell your friends we're going to worship Sunday morning at 10 o'clock somebody asks you what you're doing don't tell them you're going to church tell them I'm going to worship Seven o'clock in the morning, somebody ask you, huh, why are you always on your phone? Huh? Tell them, because I'm in worship. Huh? When somebody tells you why you're giving your tithes, huh? tell them I'm not paying my tithes. Huh? I'm worshiping the Lord through my tithe. Huh? When the next time somebody looks at you huh, and say you're spending too much time over there, huh? tell them I got no more time huh, to waste. Huh? I'm giving all my time to worship. Huh? And when he begin to build that altar, he, Isaac is looking at his daddy. And his daddy is looking at Isaac. And then when he lit the fire at the altar, Isaac is looking at his daddy. 
and his daddy is looking at Isaac. And right before he's ready to put Isaac on the altar, God sent an angel to disrupt what Abraham was going to do. Because at that moment, God knew that he was a worshiper. God knows you're a worshiper when you're willing to look at your bills and you're willing to look at your tithe and say, God comes first. God knows you're a worshiper. When people